Hey everybody, it's Mama K coming at you for the first time with the super, super short hair. I hope that you tuned in to see it all go away. Um, I guess I would be yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm so excited to have our next guest on with us today. She is a fantastic musician that I have played with numerous times um, in small orchestra type settings. I wish I got to make music with her more often. She is really a phenomenal arranger and performer and just, yeah, a great human being. So without further ado, special guest, who are you? Hi, I'm Karen Barg. I'm a native of Winnipeg, musician. Um, well, that's just really, really broad genre right there. <laughs> just saying musician. Yes, I'm a musician. <laughs> Self-employed. <laughs> Karen, what do you play? What's your I main play, instrument? I play violin. That's my main instrument, but I can also play viola and I can play, I can play a mean tambourine. <laughs> and as of late, I've been learning how to play drums. Which oh, excellent. Fun. Like on a, a drum kit. Yeah. Yeah. I rented a, a, a drum kit, a, an electric kit from Long McQuaid and uh, for Mark's birthday, my husband, Mark. And, uh, and I brought it home surprised him he says oh i'm gonna set it up and he starts setting it up i said you need help no go do what you gotta do oh, okay it's his project all right so it's all set up we've had it for almost a month and we've been having some fun on it it's been great i, I know the beginning of tom sawyer by rush Woo <laughs> that's incredible we'll definitely have to uh hear that one time and i know you and i have a have a long standing or i should say not even long standing we have a far overdue karaoke date too i know you are oh a yes fan. yeah no, we got to do that. Once all this craziness is done, that's it. There's going to be a karaoke party. So as a freelance musician, um, these are interesting times indeed. So before all of this happened, uh, what, what did you, what was your main uh, job? What, what do you make a living doing? I am the artistic director and first violinist of the Luminous String Quartet. Uh, Suzuki violin teacher, as you said, music arranger and now I guess I can add to my uh, list of duties, rock violinist. <laughs> the amount of people that you have connected with over the last few years is really incredible. Do you want to share with us maybe some of the groups that you've uh, gotten the chance to share a stage with? Uh, there are two groups that I've gotten to share a stage with, and that's uh, Honeymoon Suite back in February last year at Club Regent, and then also with Chilliwack on New Year's Eve at Club Regent, which was really exciting and being able to perform with them. You know, having these guys up on my wall as a teenager, I was just totally fangirling in my, in my brain, but at, at the same time, you know, you have to may, remain very calm, the composure and professional and, but in my brain, I was screaming. It was great. Now you're classically trained, correct? Yes. But your, it seems like your passion truly <laughs> does lie uh, with, rock music, classic rock oh, specifically. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As a kid, that's all I listened to was, well, mostly mainstream, whatever, pop and rock, but I was totally into heavy metal. I wore so much makeup that you had, you could see two-tone skin. It was, it was ridiculous. And so much black around the eyes. I looked like a panda bear. It was gross, but you know, and the, oh yes, the hair too. It was just like, how many bottles of hairspray can you fit in your hair in one day, right? It was all about the Aquanet. <laughs> That was it. That. <laughs> so now um, I would love for you to share about the CD that that uh, Luminous uh, has put together and some of the songs, yes. if, if you're willing to talk about it. Sure. Well, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory on it. Um, two and a half years ago, uh, Classic Rock Fest 2017 happened, and it was the first kind of mini festival that I had been to. Uh, being a little bit sheltered when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to go to a lot of concerts and, and all that kind of thing. So um, being able to have that freedom to go to concerts and enjoy bands that you grew up on. So that night was uh, The Pumps and Orphan and Harlequin, uh, Honeymoon Suite and Streetheart. And because Kenny Shields had just passed away that, that past July, it ended up being a, a bit of a tribute show to him which was really wonderful. And Mike Reno came out and sang some songs with Street Heart and a whole bunch of other people. Lisa Windsor from Winnipeg, fantastic singer. I, I call her the white Aretha Franklin. She is a phenomenal singer. Anyway, she also was singing and it just, the, the whole show just blew me away. And on the way home as my ears are ringing, 
I say to Mark, well, I actually probably yelled it to him because I couldn't hear anything. Uh, and asked him, I said, well, what do you think if I start arranging Canadian classic rock for a string quartet? And he asked, he says, well, do you think you can do it? I'm going to try. I'm going to make an effort. So I started doing Harlequins, I Did It For Love, Pumps, Orphan, Miracle, What Kind of Love Is This by Street Heart. And things just started to sort of fall into place. And it was, it was interesting because I was starting to listen to music in, in a way where I was trying to figure out now which voice is going to go where right? So which, which voice is going to play what notes? And how am I going to in, um, put drum fills in? Like that kind of thing, like trying to make it as close to the original as possible. And as a result, I started, you know, expanding and thinking, well, maybe this could be a project that I could get into and, and, and do some serious work on. And <clears throat> as a result, uh, I ended up connecting with all kinds of artists Canadian artists and bands here and and they've been very supportive and encouraging and in some instances they've actually helped me out with some of the notation or just given them their their opinion on what they what, the, what they're hearing and that kind of thing so it really started to snowball it was like a domino effect but um, the one person who was really instrumental in helping me get this off the ground was Jerry Atwell so and we miss him so much. He was, he was a staple in the Winnipeg music community. And, um, but he was the one who started putting me in contact with, with some of these people. And, and that's where it just flew from there. Just went. Where, where are things at right now? Now I know last night was supposed to be um, quite an event and that yeah. basically got postponed. So do you, is the CD complete? What, where are you oh, at? Yes. The, the CD is complete. It's ready to roll. Um, we were going to have our release last night and start selling the CD. And then everything, of course, got postponed because of the virus. And so we're hoping to have the show sometime in the fall, depending on what, uh, what kind of availability that the uh, concert hall has, because that's where we're having it. We're doing it in the lobby. So the bar will be open. Of course, was, I was asked, do you, do you want the bar open? Well, yes. Canadian classic rock and a beer. They go together. <laughs> they just have, yeah, they do. They just do, right? And um, so we'll see when, when we're able to reschedule the show. But for now, we've decided that, um, well, I've decided that I, I want the CD to be available now. So so how do people get a hold of it? I like, I know for one, I am, I am <laughs> greedy. I want it now. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, well, I'm thinking, I'm going to try and get something put together for next week in terms of people being able to send me a message and say that they, they would like it sent to their home or whatever. And so it'll be, uh, the CD is $20 plus shipping and handling. So whatever it is for the, for, to mail it out. So I'm hoping to, to get that all started out with my uh, website guru so she can put it on the website. So people maybe can just click a button and then be able to put their contact information in and I can send them CD and e-transfers and stuff like that. So we'll see how it all goes, but going to try and make that happen for next week. What's your website, Karen? Uh, it is luminousstringquartet.ca. Excellent. And mm -hmm. so then if people want to follow along and, and get, get the dates for the, for the release, they can, they can check that out. They can check that out there. They can also visit our uh, Facebook page as well. We're also on Instagram and we're on Twitter as well. So just everywhere. Yeah. Excellent. Now, of yeah. course, remembering that this is a family interview, I have a weird question for you. What is okay. the strangest gig or job that you have ever played or been involved in? I was thinking about this and it's not really, it, it was weird. It was very strange. Um, last year in July, at the end of July, I had a call from a friend of mine, Brent Allery, who's the lead singer of the Southern rock band Wreck and So. Check them out. They are awesome. Ronnie Latterbrook is Mr. Shredder on the guitar. Anyways, um, and uh, he had asked me if uh, Mark and I would be able to put up a, a, a band of guys for the night. And we said, yeah, no problem. We have the space. And so I, I got a call on the Monday morning um, from the uh, tour manager, Stripe, <clears throat> of the band Joyous Wolf. And see, I'm, I'm actually, here, there we go. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm representing today, representing there, representing, oh yes, representing some street heart as well. Lovely hoodies, get them online, street heart, yes. Anyways, um, <laughs> so 
the uh, yeah, the tour manager said, well, we're going to be a little bit late tonight because we're having a meeting with John Moyer from the band Disturbed, because Disturbed was coming into town. And that was, this, the concert was the next night, as well as Joyous Wolf, who were opening up for Slash at the Burt. And uh, so, yeah, no problem. And I said, by the way, I am actually playing for Disturbed, uh, doing Sound of Silence. And, and uh, that threw this, this strike back. He just sort of went, well, okay, wow, that's really cool. And we didn't say anything more about it. And then they came over and we had a nice time with them getting to know the guys. Next day comes and I go to the Bell MTS Center, uh, meet up with Natalie Daw, who was playing cello with me. And uh, we went and had some supper because it was catered. And so we were sitting there having our, our meal and in walks John Moyer. We're going, oh, okay, so he's going to get some Get, get some dessert or something like that. And he's looking at everybody at the different tables and looking around. And, and then he, and I was wearing my Joyce Wolf t-shirt and he looks straight at me, he goes, you're Karen, aren't you? Yeah, you're John Moyer. <laughs> it's like, what else do you say? <laughs> and he sits down and starts talking to me about how the guys from Joyce Wolf were talking about me and Mark the night before and how they were really happy to be able to have a place to stay for night and uh so it just threw me for a loop that he looked straight at me and said you're karen aren't you and i was i've never met this man before and he's like like rock and roll man right and so that that kind of threw me that was it was pretty funny just just to have that experience like okay all right hi i'm karen i'm not sure <laughs> so you got to be on stage with disturbed yes um, are yeah. there any other groups sort of like that where you were um, sort of hired to be part of the string section for them as yes. well? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, goodness. There have been a number of, of, of acts that I've played for. Um, Anne Murray, I've played for her twice. Um, Sarah Brightman, I've played for twice. Never got to meet her, though. That was a little bizarre. Like, usually, usually people tend to be, you know nice to the string players and talk to them at least and have some sort of interaction. But Sarah, there was no interaction. Uh, Il Devo twice. Um, um, who else? That disturbed. Yes. Michael Bolton. Um, oh yeah, of course, of course. Michael Buble last year, April, which was absolutely hilarious. He, um, actually here's another quick little story. Um, we were doing the sound check and after he had had a little bit of banter with us, uh, he started going up the steps. I don't know if you know how the, the stage looked, it was tiered. So it, w it went right up to the top. Like it was like, I don't know how many feet off the ground. And I was up at the top. I was principal second violinist and I was the first one in and he goes right up to the top. He's going to start working on or singing. Um, and I'm feeling good. He says, let's go from the top. And he's look, and I look at him, and he's beside me, and I'm looking at him, kind of funny. And he says, "Oh, don't worry, I'm just coming up from a hole in the ground here." I said, "Yeah, okay, that's good, but don't get too close. You're going to get a bow up the nose or something, you know, and that's not going to be very comfortable for you." And he started laughing, and I thought, "Okay, this is cool, right on, whatever." So we start playing, and I hear him go, "It's a new dawn," and then I feel a hand on my shoulder, and the mic comes around my face, and it's a new day, and he says oh, we're going to do that tonight. And I said, no, not while I'm playing, you know, like, but that's the, I think probably the first and last time I will ever hear my vocals reverberating around the Bell MTS Center <laughs> with a band. <laughs> oh my God, that's fantastic. <laughs> so fun. So fun. Like just really cool experiences that, that we end up having with these people. And where Honeymoon Suite is concerned, it's, it's hard to believe, but they are now like my brothers. It's like, I was a big fan of theirs as a kid. And now like I can text them and ask them questions or, or just have a chat with them and just check in on them and see how they're doing. And it's, it's surreal. Well, you have worked so hard for <clears throat> many years to get where you are. Do you have yeah. any advice for students who are thinking of maybe having music as their career? Keep at it and work for excellence and be patient with success. Don't expect it to happen tomorrow. Don't expect it yesterday. Just keep working at it and be pleasantly surprised when it does happen.
also be a great human being like you are. I mean, every oh. single time I, I have any interaction with you, it's, I, I talk about it for days and it's just, I love every single time I get to be with you. Well, the feeling is mutual, Joanne. Absolutely. No, we always have a little bit too much fun. We do. We do. We may have been shushed occasionally. (laughs) Well, Yuri Claus has shushed us uh, many times, I'm sure. (laughs) Yes. Any extra last little bits of worldly wisdom during these weird times? Other than stay home and wash your hands? (laughs) Um, And listen to the Luminous Quartet. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. That'll be great. That'll be great. Um, just, just to say that, you know, things didn't really start happening for me until the age of 46. Um, when I started to work on this project, I mean, you think about people in, in the, uh, in the movie business or in the music business and, you know, what age they were and there's, there's, you know, memes that go around on Facebook and one really caught my eye and saying that, um, Samuel L. Jackson didn't get his first big movie role until he was 46. So really, honestly, patience is key. You might be treading water for a little while, but just be patient because you'll actually start swimming at some point. So great advice. Take it easy. Yeah. Great advice. Karen, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Um, You know what? I'll get more information about uh, about your website and all that, and I'll post it in the comments. And so people can click on that link and and check out uh, what you've been up to. That so, sounds great. I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks again. And thank you too, Joanne. You have an awesome day too. Take care. Bye. Bye.